Hey guys, this is Charles Jager with Metal. In this After Effects tutorial, I'm gonna show you how you can use Metal Flux to add atmosphere to a scene. Let's go ahead and take a look at a few examples. Before we get started, I do want to mention you can download a free trial of Metal Flux from Metal.com. You can also download the project file for this tutorial, which is going to have some footage that I'm going to be using today if you want to follow along. The basic premise of what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be tracking some footage, and then we're going to add in Metal Flux, which can be tracked into the 3D space, and then we're going to composite everything together for our final shot. Alright, let's go ahead and jump into After Effects. All right, inside of After Effects, I have this aerial shot here. You can see of the sunset, and I can kind of scroll over this, and we can see how we're kind of moving through the scene. And the first thing we need to do is we need to camera track this footage. So I've got the tracker window open over here, and if you don't see that, just go to Window, and then select Tracker. And now with my footage selected, I'm gonna come over here and select Track Camera. And once that process completes, you're gonna see a bunch of different tracking points all over your footage, and if you just scroll through, you should see that everything tracks with the footage. So what I want to do now is I want to go ahead and create a camera. So I'm going to just select that. That's going to add a 3D camera into our scene. Now we can go ahead and add in Metal Flux. So I'm going to right click here and I'm going to do a new solid. And I'm just going to name this Flux. And I want to select Make Comp Size and go ahead and click OK. And on that solid we can come here to Effect. I'm going to find Metal, and then we're going to select Metal Flux. And right off the bat, we won't see anything because we don't have a volume actually added into our scene yet. Now, I like to always start out with one of the presets. So just navigate here to Presets, and I'm going to select the Starburst preset. Now we can see we have Flux added into our scene, and if we come down here to a Custom Camera View, we can kind of look at this in 3D, and I'm just going to rotate around this. You can see we have our camera here. If we go ahead and select the camera, we can see kind of where it's going to be moving through the flux volume. It's a very large volume right now. We can adjust that. So let's go ahead and go back to our active camera. If I zoom out here a little bit, we're going to see we have a little kind of bright spot right in the center of our volume. And that happens depending on the mutation variations you've got or whatever preset you're working with. So if I go ahead and select flux here, and we come over here to the mutation. You can see there's four mutations on this preset. And this variation is the hourglass preset. And in some cases, this won't really matter, but in our case here, where I'm wanting this to kind of act like an atmospheric volume, I don't really want to have that bright spot in the middle. So what we can do is just change the variation here to one of the other variations. I'm going to hit this sinusoidal one right here, second from the top. You can see that's just going to change that. That'll just get rid of that one little hot spot right in the center of the volume. Now right now, the volume is very large, so I actually want to dial the scale of this down. So if we go over to the scale, it's currently at 100. I'm just going to type in 30. We can kind of dial this down for our scene, so now we can kind of see that has scaled everything down a little bit. It's still quite large. We can adjust that a little more later on. We'll kind of move it back farther from the camera. Another thing we can do to kind of refine our volume is adjust the iterations here. So currently it's set to 12 on the default. I'm going to increase this to 16. And now we're starting to see this atmosphere take shape. We're getting a little more of those kind of fine, wispy details on the volume. And it's not quite as bright and overwhelming. Another option we can adjust is the smoothness if we want to see a few more details on this volume. So I'm going to go ahead and close up that mutation. And we'll come down here to volumetric rendering. So I'm just going to toggle this down. And we see smooth and volume default set to 2. So I'm just going to set this to 0. And you'll see we get a little bit more detail in here. Now this footage is kind of flat. And right now the flux volume also looks kind of flat. So I've actually created an adjustment layer here with a color grade on it. I'm just going to move this above everything, including the flux volume. And for this color grade, this is just a Lumetri color effect. And you can see I've just added in some contrast and adjusted the shadows. And I'll go ahead and turn that on so it's visible. Now we can kind of see how this affects everything. We're getting a lot more detail on the volume, more color saturation. And everything just looks a lot more contrasty and how it's going to look in the end. So now let's go ahead and move the position of the flux volume kind of in 3D space. So I'm going to select flux again here. And I'm going to close up the volumetric rendering tab. We're going to come down here to the 3D Transform tab. And we can come down here to Volume Position in Z-Space right here at the bottom. You can see as I increase this, 
it's gonna kind of move that entire volume away from our camera. And because we've moved it further away from the camera, if we go into the custom camera view, we can kind of see there's the volume. I'll just zoom in here a little bit so we can see this a little closer. So we can see the volume here and we can see there's our camera. If I select that, you can see how we're kind of tracking toward it. So let's go back to the active camera. This does make the volume a little bit smaller kind of on screen here. So if we want to increase that size a little bit more, we can here with the volume size. So currently it's set to 10. So I might increase this to something like 16. And you can see that'll just expand that a little bit more. Let's go ahead and do a quick RAM preview of this. We'll kind of track in through the volume right now. We'll get a better idea of the scale with the parallax. And now we can get a better idea of what the volume actually looks like as we're flying through it and get a better sense of the scale. Now, one thing we actually need to look at is the floor plane of the flux volume. As we can kind of see, we're getting some nice parallax here on the upper half, but because the flux volume actually doesn't know where the floor is on our footage, if it actually extends past that, it won't look quite right. It kind of looks like it's drifting almost in the opposite direction. You can kind of notice this down here uh, as that goes past the trees there. It's really kind of breaking through the floor plane. But luckily, we have a way we can fix this with flux. So I'm going to go ahead and close up the 3D Transform tab. And we come down here to Advanced. And then we're going to see we have a clipping volume. So if we go ahead and toggle those options down. And we have different shapes we can select from. So I'm going to select here a cube clipping volume shape. And you'll see a slight change in our volume, but what we really need to do is we need to come down here and select the clipping volume inverse because we want this to actually subtract. So when we do that, we're gonna see everything kind of disappears. That's because this cube is really dead center of our volume. So we need to move and reposition that kind of down here to the floor plane where we want that to cut off. Now we can see there's a little bit of the volume still left right here. So I wanna increase this so that it removes everything from the volume. So I'm gonna increase the shape size here to 2.5. Now we'll see that's disappeared. So we know that our cube is large enough to cover the entire floor plane. And right now, just for demonstration purposes, I'm gonna select the feather here and take this all the way down to zero so we can see a nice hard edge. And we're gonna adjust the Y position right here. So watch what happens as I kind of increase this. We should see the volume start to appear on top as we can see. And now we can kind of see it appearing as it goes through. So you can see we're kind of adjusting where that floor plane is for our volume. I think something like 3.5, anywhere from 3 to 3.5 with this shot probably looks pretty good. And to add a little more realism back into this, I don't want that to be a completely hard cutoff. So I want to increase the feather here to something like 5. Just so it has a little bit of a smoother roll off right there on that plane. And again, the point of this is to just ensure that the flux volume here doesn't extend past our floor plane. And you can see if I go ahead and turn this back off, you'll get a feel of where we're kind of clipping off. You can see how we're clipping off this extra down here. So I'm going to set that back to cube. And we can do another quick RAM preview here and see what this looks like. Now we can see that it's more of a natural floor plane kind of right there along that tree line. So I think that's looking pretty good. Next, depending on the atmosphere look you're going for, you can also add some evolution, maybe add a little bit of extra subtle movement onto the volume. So if we come back up here to the top, you can see we have these evolution options here. And I'm just going to animate one of these slightly. So at the very beginning of my composition, I'm going to go ahead and create a keyframe for the X evolution. Then I might move all the way down here to the end maybe changes something like 20. And that'll just kind of emulate that maybe it's drifting with the wind or something like that over time. We can also look at various ways we can composite the flux volume onto our footage. You can see right now we're just looking at this in the normal mode. However, we can navigate to the modes here and we can change this to something like add or screen. I'm gonna select add here. You can see it's really kind of overwhelming on our shot, but I can go ahead and hit T on the keyboard for opacity for this whole thing. And I can bring this down and maybe to something like 60. That's what I did with the original shot where I kind of had this volume there. So you get kind of some bright colors in here, but again, it's not overwhelming because we dialed down the opacity. Finally, another extra trick I like to do on this is I'm gonna go ahead and close up the flux volume here, but on that flux solid, I'm gonna apply the effect color correction vibrance. And we can adjust the vibrance here to kind of affect the colors of the flux volume. So I can increase this. This will kind of increase the color saturation with that volume, or alternatively, if I didn't want to have any color and I want to kind of have a fog look to it, I could dial this all the way down to a negative 100. You'll see it just makes everything white and kind of takes away a lot of that vibrance and saturation. So I'm going to change this back to zero for saturation and 100 for vibrance, just to really kind of have that extra bit of color in there. Now we can see the final result of this flux volume added into our shot.
Now I want to share a few extra tips for creative ways you can use flux to add atmosphere to a scene. You can see in this particular shot, what I've used is two different flux volumes. So you can actually add more than one to a scene. I've got one over here and one over here. And this allows you to get really specific on where you want volumes to appear in your track scene. And in this composition, another thing you can do is actually pre-compose the flux volume with the camera. This allows you to add secondary effects onto the flux volume and atmosphere. So you can see I've kind of got an aura right here that's tracked into this scene. So if I want to pre-compose everything together with this, what I need to do is I need to select the 3D tracker camera and I'm gonna hold control and select the flux volume. And just come up here to layer and go down to pre-compose. And we can just call this volume and go ahead and select okay. Now when we do that, that's gonna change the appearance of our volume if we had a different blending mode applied to it. So I'm just gonna change this back to what it was. I'll come back here to screen and apply that as a screen blending mode. But let's actually jump inside of that volume composition. So I'm just gonna double click. And in here, what we need to do, you can see if I toggle on the transparency, we need to add a black background. That's gonna help work a lot better with the effects we apply. So I'm gonna right click, do a new solid. And I just want this to be a black solid here. Make comp size, click OK, and just place this below everything in this composition. So let's jump back out to our original shot. And you can see everything still looks the same, but what we can now do is on this composition, we can apply various effects, like I said. And one of the ones I like to apply is an unsharp mask to bring out more detail with the volume. So if we come over to Effect, under Blur and Sharpen, I'm gonna select Unsharp Mask. And I'm just gonna move down here a little closer to the volume and just zoom in. Now we can see the little fine details we're getting here on the volume. If I increase the radius here with this, you can see how that kind of makes those details pop out even more. You see as I check that on and off. So if you're going for a really stylized look where you kind of need to see those wisps and fine details, using Unsharp Mask with a Flux Volume Precompose can be a nice way of doing that. And again, alternatively, you can apply effects like Glow and things like that to customize your Flux Volume even more. All right guys, hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial showing how you can add atmosphere to a scene using Metal Flux. Again, this has been Charles Jager with Metal. Thanks for watching.